Hey everyone, I'm here today making this video because I would like to ask for some help. So we have the March of the Mammoths readathon starting in only a few days on March 1st, and I still haven't fully decided which three 800 plus page books I would like to commit to reading throughout the whole month. So I have a stack of 15 potential options sitting here beside me, and I thought it would be useful if I told you what I was thinking about reading, and then I could open the floor and hopefully you could let me know which ones you think I should end up choosing. So I'm still pretty open-minded at this point. I haven't fully decided so I'd love to hear if you have any thoughts good or bad about these books because it would be a real drag of a month if I end up picking three super long boring books. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know which ones you think I should choose. I have the books sorted into three categories. So we've got some classics, some contemporary books, and some nonfiction options as well. So let's get started with the classics. So I know the whole point of this readathon is to pick up long and intimidating books on your shelf, but this first one that I'm going to talk about is one that scares me because it just seems obscenely long. And that is Three Kingdoms. This is a Chinese classic attributed to Luo Guangzong, and this version has been translated into English by Moss Roberts. This is about 1,600 pages, so it is about two mammoth-sized books in one, and thankfully this edition has been split up into three smaller versions, or I would be crushed under the weight of this whole thing. This is a well-loved Chinese classic set at the end of the Han Dynasty. What excites me about reading this book is that I haven't really read a lot of Chinese classics and I feel like I need to start doing that more often. But what puts me off about this book <laughs> is that it is very focused around war and battles and military strategy, which like I'm not really sure if that is my thing. So I don't know if that can sustain my interest over such a long novel, but it is one that I'm curious about giving a try someday. The next two classics I have are books that are considered essential reading if you're interested in learning about the history of like weird or experimental writing, which I certainly am. So the first of these is The Anatomy of Melancholy by Robert Burden. This one I don't have a full page count for because it's broken up into different books, which then starts the page count again at zero. So I think if you add it up, it's definitely over a thousand pages. And this one is just kind of like a pseudo-scientific textbook encyclopedia type thing all about the subject of melancholy or depression. So I've heard that just there's like a lot of information in here and then it is also very humorous at times and just a lot of writers that I admire seem to really like this one. So it has been on my list for a while but I do worry that it's not the kind of book that I want to try to burn through in a month. This might be one that I maybe would enjoy better if I took my time making my way through it over the course of a year. So we'll see about that one. And then the other kind of like weird work that I have is Gargantua and Pentagruel by Rabelais. And this has been translated from the French by M.A. Screech. This is apparently just like a very satirical work. I don't know too much about it, but I think it's just throwing a bunch of shade at all facets of French society. So it sounds like it could be a good time. Another French classic that I am very seriously considering picking up this month is Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I've been increasingly more interested in French literature and I still haven't read Hugo and I feel like this would be as good a place as any to start. This book is pretty famous because of the musical and the movies based on the musical, which I actually have never seen all the way through. So I kind of sort of know the premise of this, but I actually am not familiar with where the story goes. So I do have that angle to interest me. I am not familiar with the plot. And I feel like this is just one that if I don't read it this month in March, like I don't know when I'm ever going to want to read it because this one is just really long as well. This is about 1,400 pages. So I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to get around to this one. And most people who I've talked to that have finished this one seem to have favorable impressions. So I'm hoping that this could be a good choice. But let me know if you feel otherwise. I've also got two Victorian classics that I'm considering reading. One of them is Daniel Deronda by George Eliot. I don't know a ton about the story, but I usually enjoy George Eliot. So this one has been next on my list for a while. I'm also considering reading The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. He is a Victorian author that I've heard so many good things about and have never picked up any of his books yet. So this could be a good opportunity to correct that. 
I also have a Russian modern classic on my list, and that's Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman. This follows a family who are living during the Stalin era, and I've heard some mixed reviews about this book from people who have finished it, but it's usually an interesting period of history to read through, so I would be curious to pick this one up. Moving on to my more contemporary novels, one that I'm very tempted to pick up is definitely The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. This won the Man Booker Prize in 2013, and I read the first chapter when I did a try a chapter tag back in August, and I have been thinking about this book ever since. I was really impressed with the first chapter, and I liked the writing style, and I got pretty sucked into the story, so it has been a book that I've wanted to return to ever since, so I am strongly interested in reading this one. Another strong contender is a true novel by Minae Mizumura. This is a Japanese novel that I've heard is some kind of retelling of Wuthering Heights that has me so intrigued. I love Wuthering Heights and I've been wanting to read this book for a few years so this could be a great opportunity to finally commit to reading it. Another Japanese novel that I have as an option is 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. I would love to hear your thoughts on this one. I'm a bit on the fence about it because I don't really know if Murakami's style would really hold up in a novel that's over a thousand pages in length. I wonder if I would grow tired of his style. It might be best in kind of shorter, more sustained bursts. Although my favorite is The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, which is around 500 pages. So I'd love to know what you think about this one. Is this one of his best works or is this one that I should maybe save to near the end of reading through Murakami? Next up I have two books by American authors. One of them is Europe Central by William T. Volman. William Volman is one of those writers that's famous for writing a ridiculous amount of books that are quite often long and difficult. In fact, I own a few mammoth-sized books by him, so I need to get going on that. Europe Central is one of his more popular books. It won the National Book Award, and it's set during World War II, and you spend some time in Nazi Germany and some time in Soviet Russia. And I don't always jump to read books set during World War II. It's not always my favorite time period, but I do trust Volman as a writer. I think he would have a very interesting take on this history, and I do know that the Russian sections follow the life of Dmitry Shostakovich, so I'm always happy to read about composers. Then I have Underworld by Don DeLillo. This is kind of just like a long classic postmodern American work, and honestly I've read three books now by Don DeLillo, and none of them have really blown me out of the water, so I'm not sure sure that I'm like enthusiastic about his style enough to want to commit to reading a book this long by him. And I also know that the opening of this book is set during a baseball game and that's not something that I'm super interested in reading about. So this is one that I'd be really curious to hear your opinions about because I never seem to be really compelled to pick up this book so it's kind of one that like I could read it this month or I could also maybe get rid of my copy because I don't know if it's ever gonna happen. And lastly, there are three nonfiction books that I'm considering for this readathon. One of them is a historical book, and that is History of the Conquest of Mexico by William H. Prescott. This is all about Cortez's adventures through Latin America. I'm always interested in learning more about colonialism, and I have studied it more in a Canadian context, so I would like to learn more about what happened in other parts of the Americas. I feel like this book is going to be depressing and is going to make me angry, but I think it's important history to learn. Then I have this massive biography of the Brontes by Juliet Barker. This is one I've wanted to pick up for so long. I love the writings of the Bronte sisters, and I'd love to know more about their life and their relationships with each other. It would be so fascinating. I always feel kind of guilty about wanting to read this book because it's going to take so much time, and I feel like in that time I could learn more about like entire subjects or like you know important history but instead I'm kind of dedicating it to like these like three writers who we don't really know a ton about but anyway I do want to read this one so this is definitely in the running for March and then lastly my wild card is this one the novel a biography by Michael Schmidt this is a book that just kind of takes you through um, the history of how like the novel has changed and developed and goes through a certain few novels in particular. I don't know if this is one that I want to blitz through in a month or if it's best spacing out over time. I feel like I will want to read most of the novels that Schmidt will focus on in this book, so maybe it's not the best choice for this readathon, but I have been wanting to dive into this one for a few years now. 
So that's it for my list of potential options for books I want to read during the month of March. Um, please let me know any of your feedback. Are there any of these books that you think I should read or ones that you think I should avoid? I would love to hear your opinions and I will get back to you on March 1st when I have decided which ones I'm going to be picking up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in March.